All right, I received this question. So I thought I would go back to basics with Samplitude Pro X8, uh, talking about uh, selecting, uh, placing the playhead automatically, stuff like that. So let's dive in right away. All right, uh, we go back to basic with Samplitude Pro X8. Of course, um, it's a big software, might be overwhelming. Uh, first thing you might want to do is go at the bottom and choose the workspace, uh, either big icon or default. So it will show most of the stuff um, that are important. Uh, of course, you can go back right here and see a few uh, features and at the bottom show stuff like the mixer. All right. And uh, if you go on others like the power user, most of the tools are detached in a separate window so you can uh, flip to another screen and there's still the commands at the bottom and as you see if i choose the track the track uh, properties are hidden you need to click here to have it back so let's go back to default the question i received was about shortcuts and there's too many to expose here in in one video so what i recommend is uh it the Y key on your keyboard and go here in keyboard menu and every shortcut will be there. So you can check in edit, control C, control Z. Um, so there's a bunch of stuff, uh, tracks, copy tracks. There's a lot of stuff not assigned. So you can click on one and at the bottom type uh, what key you want it to be controlled with. So that's very interesting. So objects, select, select object C, control, alt, L, uh, select next object that, that was part of the, the question, control, alt, and W. Previous, whew, there's a lot of stuff. Control, alt, shift, and Q. Wow. Uh, so if you don't like those, you can change them. Be sure to check if it's not assigned yet. If I type here, control C, you can make a search and then you find that it's already uh, assigned. You can delete it. So the control C won't do what it did and you can reassign it to a new function if you want. So this is a very personal thing. Um, and it goes the same with the controllers. You can, if you have a controller, you can assign each button to do something special and it will be designed for you. So you need to explore those shortcuts and learn those that are good to you those that you want to use often since we are here talking about basics why not uh, going for what everybody asks when you install an interface you must go on the maker website and download and install the latest drivers once you do that and go into Ozio setup it is a must to choose the right drivers that fits your uh, audio interface and there is some um, drivers that are already there like magic low latency it won't give the same results as if you take these ASIO drivers made for your audio interface after that you check the default uh, format that you want to work on and so that's good uh, next step is to go on the second one, OZIO devices, and make sure that the devices that you will use are checked and selected. So they will be available in the list on tracks and on outputs. So on the playback are the outputs, and of course recording are the inputs. And 
in my case, I use an RMA UFX, every one of those inputs and outputs are reflected on their real-time mixer. So if I go on the real-time mixer of uh, the RMA, which is named Total Mix FX, you see all the inputs are here on the top and all the playbacks are here in the middle. With the RMA, the playbacks are not linked directly to physical outputs. The physical outputs are at the bottom, so I can decide to have a, what, this playback uh, go in this physical output but does not play on the other one. So that's the way I do headphone mixes. One musician that received the click, but the others, they don't want to hear it, only the drummers, let's say. And uh, after that, uh, the playback from uh, Assemplitude, uh, some might want to hear it more loud or uh, softer. And then all the inputs, you can make a mix for every output. That's a big plus for RMA with their real-time mixer. There's many other uh, audio interfaces that can do that as well. One interesting thing to um, select is if you go into recording, there's a pre-recording and a post-recording. So we can click this and select how many seconds and click here, how many seconds as well. What it means is even if you did not push the record button, it will record in the background. So let's say I select a range and I put my in and out for the punch and at the bottom, I can activate the punch. If I record, there will be a bit of audio recorded before and after. So if my cut is not uh, at the exact, exact best place for the mixing, um, then it will record a bit before and a bit after. Uh, the same way if I hit play and while playing, I hit record, you will get a bit of audio recorded before I hit record. So it takes a lot of uh, CPU and uh, some uh, hard drive uh, resources, uh, but it's worth it if uh, you work with a band or uh, many musicians and you can't afford to uh, re record many times. And if time is an issue, that's a good thing to activate. One last thing. Uh, if you manipulate uh, a track, uh, if you go click and hold your click and drag at the bottom of one uh, object, it will select the object Okay, below that middle line. If you do the same thing up, it will select that part of uh, the object. So that's a good way if you want to delete with one part, you can select and delete. And uh, there's a lot of uh, features like that that you might want to learn. All right. I hope you liked this video. If you have any questions, go in the comments and ask. I will do a video about it or maybe I will type the answer right away. If you did like the video, I hope you will want to help the channel a little bit. So there's two ways. There's some links for uh, products in the description for promo codes and stuff like that. And also another way to help the channel is to play many videos. So go ahead, search uh, the list. There's a lot of things, basics and more advanced. And of course, questions as well if you don't find the answer. Have a nice one. See you for the next video.